Hello, and thank you for watching Guitar How To's. Just finished assembling this. It's really kind of a shelf unit, and I'll be putting speakers in this. I have four extra speakers that I haven't used in years. I don't have them here in the shot, but you'll get to this later. I shopped around and looked around and looked around. Came across this unit here, which is really a cubicle. Had to make sure these are 12 inches because that's what the speaker size is, 12 inches or more than 12 inches. And that's this one here. This one's also sturdy. When it's upright, you can put things on top of it up to, I think it was 100 pounds. So that ought to hold the guitar head. I'm going to take the bottom set and make them sealed and up the top. I'm going to have this as partially opened so I get the benefit of the two different sounds of uh, speaker cabinets. As you probably know, uh, open back cabinets are, you know, airier sounding, for lack of a better word. You know, there's more thrust, I guess, to the, to the sound when the cabinets are sealed. Off camera, what I did here is I went up four inches from this edge up to my pencil mark. Did that on both sides because this piece of plywood here is going to be cut to fit this bottom part of the cubby hole. So let's get started here. This is the back. Pull the board up here. I want to use the factory square edge. Now let's do the other side. There's my cut lines. That will be the back. Skipping ahead here a bit, I have cut the, what will be the front, and the back piece is underneath here. I've also sketched out uh, from corner to corner. So this is the center of the cabinet here, and then where the four speakers will go are over here. One, two, three, and four. And here is one of the four speakers I'll be putting in here. I have a pair of these and a pair of another set. I'm taking this out so I can get a size for the cutout. The whole, the whole width of it is 12 inches. It's I'll give it 12 inches. Now we don't need a 12 inch cutout because if we do, the speaker will fall through. You'll need an 11 inch cutout. I'm going to show you one other thing here. The automotive store can be your friend. I came across these and I thought, hmm, that looks a little better. Here's the back piece. I just have it taped into place. It's just a temporary hold. Uh, unless you have better tools than I have, this is not going to come out perfect. It's come out, come out pretty good, but it's not perfect. Of course, I have a compass. I'll be using that. And I want to go five and a half inches out. Hopefully you can see the lines. Here's one, two, three, and four. Off camera, I drilled four holes and installed these uh, input jacks, drilled pilot holes with the screws.
Of course, this will have to be undone to wire the speakers. We'll get to that when we get to it. At least this gives me an idea of the, of the fit. We have all our lines marked, so let's drill the pilot holes. Off camera, I laid the speaker in to get an idea, not just what it looks like, but how I am going to attach it. So I marked off the drill marks for each of the four corners, so to speak, of the, of the speaker. So I'm going to now drill the pilot holes. I have 25 watt speakers. That's these. Let me show you the back here. These Celestians. Now I'll screw this in. I'm putting the 25s here and the 75 watt speakers down here. They're all 16 ohm. Here's the next set. Okay. I believe this came out of an old Marshall. Let's drill our holes and get the screws in place. Now for the covers.
Alright, we're about ready to hook the speakers up, solder the jacks, and put the clips on the end here to put on the speakers. If you do this job, just um, again, common sense here, but make sure the positive goes with positive and the negative goes with negative. If you don't do that and you have a speaker or two reversed, um, you'll be out of phase. And I left these on a little bit on the longer side because I know most people are used to taking the back off to get to the speakers, uh, which is okay. Uh, but I'll tell you, on this unit, it's probably just easy to unscrew, you know, unscrew this, take it out. My red is positive. And that's on the right hand side. And I want to squeeze those clips a little bit to give them a tighter fit. This one's really loose. Too tight, you can't get it on, but not so loose that it'll come off. Get these tools away from your speakers. Don't go near the paper. Good for now. And I'm gonna screw the screw the plate in. Let me show you. Now it may be easy to do this first. Probably is. So, I'll screw the rest in by hand. Because the speakers are not centered in the square, there is not enough room on the edges, particularly this edge and that edge, uh, to mount the speaker from the rear.
Everything's complete, but putting on the handles. This idea started because I had four extra speakers, a pair and a pair, and I had these uh, Joyo mini amplifiers with, and these have two channels each. So I can get a total of eight sounds out of this, and that should be plenty. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, hook up the effects loops today. Um, uh, each speaker uh, is wired in parallel. So there's one jack per speaker. Okay, here we are. I think the easiest thing to do first is hook up the speakers. These are in no particular order. I'll have a lot of combinations with this, with the uh, different speakers. They're all 16 ohms, each, each one's 16, and each one is 12 inches. Good thing to do is label your power supplies for what it goes to or with it saves a lot of time just labeling them right away. That's a lot neater. This is to choose which amp and this is to choose which channel on each amp.